Hello, everyone. I feel like now more than ever, I connect with the words of Paul as he penned his letters. I'm longing to be with you all. We're praying for you daily as I know that you are praying for us. May the work of God be great in and through us for his glory. This is a season of social distancing and it can leave us feeling very isolated. So as we gather together as online connect groups, may the groups of Cornerstone family, the small groups, it's on my heart to accomplish two things. One, to create a temporary way to connect, to encourage, and to speak life and faith in God to each other. And number two, to set our hearts on God, to remind us that we're never alone, to remind us that God is with us and that he is our source in all things. So let's unite our hearts together to look to him. Let's join our groups and believe God together. I'm so thankful for our recent focus on prayer at Cornerstone. I know it was one of the parts of the preparation of the Lord for these days that we are in now. It was an awesome opportunity to dig a fresh well that we're now drawing from. The Lord orders the steps of his children, and in the last season, he prepares us for this season. And so now in this season, he's preparing us for the next. Whether challenging seasons or seasons of blessings, God is with us in them all. So let's not only look to seek to get through this, but learn to grow stronger in him. With all the voices out there, all the varying viewpoints, <laughs> I thought I would like to take a few minutes today and talk about the importance of hearing the voice of our Heavenly Father. The importance of his voice being the loudest in our lives. Matthew 6.6 6 says, But you, when you pray, you go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. I want to focus for just a few minutes on that word room, or in the King James, the word is closet. It's taken from the Greek word tamion. I want here to quote Rick Renner, who is a bit of a brilliant student of the Greek. He says it's an old word that has an interesting progression in history. At first, the word tamion was used to depict a secret place where one would hide his or her most valuable possessions. But as time progressed, the word tamion came to describe a secure place, a place where a person would put money or treasure such as a safety deposit box or a, a vault at a bank. It represented a place so secure that no one would be able to break in to disrupt, to steal the valuable possessions. By the New Testament times, the word tamion came to describe a bedroom. Because the bedroom is a secret place, a place where a treasured relationship takes place between husband and wife, it makes perfect sense that the word tamion would eventually describe the most private place. Intimate moments shared between a husband and wife occur within the bedroom. Although a husband and wife love their children, in nearly every other sphere of their lives. This is a sphere that isn't available to anyone else. It's a private place, an experience to be shared only between husband and wife. This verse could be translated like this. When it's time for you to pray, enter into your bedchamber, and when you shut the door behind you and secure a place of privacy, then pray. The word tamion in this verse is used to convey the idea of intimacy with God in prayer. Jesus was figuratively saying, just as a husband and a wife enter into a bedroom and shut the door so they can bear their hearts and their soul to each other in intimacy, so you should have a relationship with God that is so tender, so special, so intimate, that it's only shared between you and him and no one else. Therefore, Find a secure place where you can go and share your heart and your soul with God in prayer. The secure place, the secret place, this intimate place, is not one of physical location, but a spiritual one. It's not necessarily your closet where you have to move your shoes or pick up those dirty clothes, although I think our houses are probably as clean as they've ever been. It's not necessarily even your bedroom. Jesus prayed on the mountain while others were sleeping. Both places are places of solitude and quietness, but Jesus prioritized his relationship with the Father above sleep. This intimate place is one where you're not to be disturbed. It's a place where your heart and your soul are transparent before the Lord. It's not only where you share your heart, but where you receive his. 
It's a place where the human and the divine can mingle together and become one. Intimacy with God grows as we allow him into the deepest parts of our heart and our soul. Right now, in the midst of this difficult season, you're most likely discovering some very deep places. It's been in my darkest valley that the depths of my heart and my soul are searched out by the light of God. As we share our deepest concerns, our deepest desires, even our deepest fears with him in prayer, we're able to sift through those deep places through the truth of the word of God. If we for forsake bringing those things to the Lord, I believe those areas will not only be open to be led by our own thoughts, but also possibly influenced by the voice of the enemy. I want to say our enemy is waiting for an access. He's waiting for an open door, a door to step in with fear and doubts, trying to be, uh, even lead you to be in control of the situation. If our thoughts remain that, just thoughts, or even many words of much speaking just among people, will lack the power of heaven to fight. Our answer to our darkest hour is not to dig deep and fight, it's not to reason, it's not to react, but our answer is to seek God and his will before we even know what we have need of. That is who he is. He gives us what we need before we even know to ask for it. Matthew 6.6 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room, and when you've shut the door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. In verse 8, it goes on to say this, For your Father knows the things you have need of before you even ask. He already knows what we have need of. He's simply there waiting for us to draw near to him. When we do, he begins to move on our behalf. He begins to set things into motion and bring about his will. He speaks then with overcoming power and authority to break strongholds. He declares victory over the schemes of the enemies in our life. He then takes what the enemy meant for evil and he turns it for good for those that love him. It's here where we discover true power to overcome the enemy. We're brought into the kingdom of God to glorify God. As he's lifted up, the strongholds of Satan are broken and his goods are plundered. It's that intimate relationship, the true power. God has spoken to me in my darkest seasons like no other. Miraculous answers, help from heaven, answers from his word before I even knew what to ask. So many people ask me, how am I doing? My testimony is this. God has so supernaturally spoken to me and ministered to me before I even knew what to ask for. Supernatural wisdom, breakthrough, healing, and so often before I even knew what to ask for, let alone what answers would bring that healing and peace. So let me ask you this now. What's your deepest concern? What's your greatest sorrow? What's your greatest dream? What's your greatest hope? What keeps you up at night? What's on your heart? Our Heavenly Father is waiting in that secret place to be the one to share that with us. He'll take our burden if we trust him. He'll roll it right onto himself and carry it off. So I want to even just now take a minute and ask you, what do you need to take to the Father? Let's just quiet our hearts, even for a moment now. Can I ask you to close your eyes and bow your head? Settle your heart. Get yourself before your Heavenly Father and take that thing to Him now. There's nothing too big, nothing too hard, nothing that He can't handle. He's the place we need to run to again and again and again. May the power of your spirit, Lord, minister to your people. Father, I even ask, God, for the ministry of the Spirit of God even now, Lord, to touch hearts, to lift burdens. God, to speak peace in the midst of the storm. God, to find that quiet resting place in you. Lord, we simply acknowledge our lives are not our own, but they've been bought by a price. Lord, you bought us and you carry us. So God, we bring these areas to you. We surrender them to you now. We trust you. Lead us beside the still waters. Restore our souls. 
and God above all make us burning and shining lights in this world. We ask these things in the awesome, 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 mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. I pray that this will be a great study to just have some conversation online with your Connect group. We're going to pray for each other. We're going to believe God together. We're going to see the other side of this day. And to God be the glory. God bless you.